We'll get Alice to um, switch the lights off and on. Audience, Eve. In the evening, during the performances, after five minutes, turn off the light. After five minutes, turn on the light. Continue through the whole program. If possible, then fade the light in and out as beautiful as possible, like the sea. 1964. Francesca says, I am anxious. You say, I am indebted to language, but I feel sick with it. She's been working in data sets all day. Now she feels like data, which can be analyzed this way or that, and so maybe she is lost in translation, having slipped across strata, blood turned brine, speaking the voice of the ocean, together with the others. The univocity of the brack, bladder rack, fur below, brine. The rip brigand panic, the sea tangle and moss back, the ooze, tang and wear. As ocean floor, they are littered, bedecked, studded with fossilized data. Beautiful like ammonites, or opals, that geological data is the darkest of matters. We aren't cynical, we are just reluctant to be deceived. It's painfully clear that staging a Noah's Ark of Repression is part of the regime's pageant. One or two of each species is plucked from the social landscape and charged as state enemies. It's just enough to keep the whole population on the same terror alert that is posted at airports and harbours. We can fuck you up good, is the message. The decomposition of all social forms is a blessing it is for us the ideal condition for a wild, massive experimentation with new arrangements, new fidelities. To no longer wait is, in one way or another, to enter into the logic of insurrection. Becoming autonomous could just as easily mean learning to fight in the street, to occupy empty houses, to cease working, to love each other madly, to cast a thousand hexes against capital and to shoplift. We're setting out from a point of extreme isolation, of extreme weakness. An insurrectional process must be built from the ground up. Nothing appears less likely than an insurrection, but nothing is more necessary for our victory over this odious project. The impossibility of remaining whole in this space of fractured texts. This modality demands that we live inside the texts as each other, speak from inside each other's mouths, steal each other's breath for our own voicing, enfold each other in our multiplicity, become multiple inside the one. Fold the outside of your text to touch the inside of the text of another. Fold it again, press it with the heel of your hand, flatten it out, repeat. Grow it, let it self-eat, excrete. Put it on the thumb and the first finger of one hand and then another. Tell me the answer. 
Paper fortune. Kindly, east of Gresham. My twin remembers another punch. Tony and I witnessed it too, the percussive shock of a young man's head against the footpath. The streets sat changed so much, but it hasn't either, and the seediness remains constant, a strange equation, down by law, more than zero. We fucked a lot. I was always getting pregnant. I wear a crown of ghost babies. Tell you what poem I wrote to this. Your face on the dog's neck. Makes no sense, does it? A love poem. This is like, this song is like making love. I think that's the most sensual thing I ever heard. Oh, we'll, yeah, we'll put a chair in place for this. Chair piece for George Brecht. Before the performance, place an empty chair in the centre of the centre aisle, equipped with a reading light and a book. If nobody has taken this seat by intermission, one of the performers should do so. 1965. Sometimes I wake lost for words, and being lost for words, then also lost to myself, having fallen out of the house of language. And having fallen out of the house of language, then, there is no way to know I or the I's body, which does not know structures or limits. It doesn't know worldly architectures and doesn't know it cannot fly and so falls to the bottom of the stairs, broken and breathless and making animal sounds. Dead to the world. The Dying Place, 1st of May, 2014. I'm lying in a bed in an institutional space where very sick and dying people are. There are three or four people in this room, my mother at one point, and a very old woman, maybe a man. People and beds change. It is a space of flux. People curling up in each other's beds, lying next to one another. Boundaries dissolve. Then I see people I know, but not always friends. At one point, someone wheels me in my bed to take part in an experimental theatre production within the institution. I think it must be along the lines of an Antonin Artaud event. I'm also thinking about the radical psychiatry movement. Perhaps M is in this part. We are sick, dying perhaps, but can still make art, even if it is under the direction of someone else, and we definitely don't know what we are doing. Trusting the situation, the people, the intention. I don't remember my dreams. I, I don't dream. I had a dream. A house and a landscape. A tall person stepping out onto the ice, rugged up against the cold. They took one step and then on the second step the ice fell away and they were quickly pulled away under the ice. Very quickly. I could see them through the ice being pulled away, face up. They became a skeleton before my eyes. I could see this from all camera angles. Shoot 100 panes of glass. When a person hurts you badly, line up 100 panes of glass in the field and shoot a bullet through it. Take a copy of a map made by the cracks on each glass and send a map a day for 100 days to the person who has hurt you. 
1966 fall. We call this politics ecstatic. Its aim is to create participable magic, techniques for inhabiting not a territory, but a world. And this creation, play between different economies of presence, between different forms of life, entails the subversion and liquidation of all apparatuses. One can hardly breathe, the voice becomes choked, and one can no longer speak except by signs. <laughs> 